Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the Psalm has in the Dewey Rames Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list Psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rames Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 55 in the Dewey Rames Bible, but Psalm 56 in the RSV. Unto the end, for a people that is removed at a distance from the sanctuary for David, for an inscription of a title or pillar, when the Philistines held him in Geth. Geth is also called Gath, a Philistine walled city which had previously been the home of Goliath the giant. Gath was also one of the places that housed the Ark of the Covenant during the time when it was stolen by the Philistines. On at least two occasions, David hid in Gath to escape from Saul, and in both cases he met with the king of Gath. So, held, in the context of this verse, doesn't refer to David being imprisoned by the Philistines. The first time David visited Gath, he escaped the Philistine king by pretending to be insane, and was held by the Philistines just long enough to show him the way out. That's not much time for psalm writing. So, it's more likely that this is the four-month period from 1 Samuel 27, in which David had befriended the king of Gath, and was given the town of Ziklag by him at the end of that time. Have mercy on me, O God, for man hath trodden me underfoot. All the day long he hath afflicted me, fighting against me. My enemies have trodden on me all the day long, for they are many that make war against me. From the height of the day I shall fear, but I will trust in thee. An expression of sadness over needing to hide from enemies who constantly try to destroy us. We have reasons to be afraid, even in broad daylight. The term height of the day implies noon. But despite all of that, God can always be trusted. In God I will praise my words. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do against me. The phrase, praise my words, could mean praising God, or it could mean thanking God for his promised protection. Since the rest of the verse is about trusting God, the latter is probably more likely. All the day long they detested my words. All their thoughts were against me unto evil. My enemies hate when I try to reason with them, and never plan to do anything good for me. They will dwell and hide themselves. They will watch my heel. As they have waited for my soul, for nothing shalt thou save them. In thy anger thou shalt break the people in pieces, O God. My enemies try to destroy me by sneaking and striking dishonorably from hiding places, but precisely for that reason, God won't accept any price to let them get away with what they've done. I have declared to thee my life. Thou hast set my tears in thy sight, and also in thy promise. Then shall my enemies be turned back, in what day soever I shall call upon thee. Behold, I know thou art my God. Because God pays attention to the suffering that each of us experiences, he'll respond to our appeals, driving our enemies off. In God will I praise the word, in the Lord will I praise his speech, in God have I hoped. I will not fear what man can do to me, in me, O God, are vows to thee, which I will pay, praises to thee. I will promise to praise God and make good on those promises, praising both God himself and the things he's promised me, as well as every word that he says. After all, man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of God. These are all reasons not to be afraid of what living people can do to hurt us, placing our relationship with God into a higher priority. Because thou hast delivered my soul from death, my feet from falling, that I may please in the sight of God, in the light of the living. God has saved our lives and offered a means for us to avoid stumbling into sin and death so that we can be pleasing to him with the way we live our lives. Let's make the most of it. So, this psalm, like many written by David, begins by mourning the malice of evildoers and the harm caused by their actions, and continues through appeals to God to a more positive praise of God, and hope and assurance that he'll fulfill his promises, and bring a time of peace and safety for those who remain faithful to him. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.